I mean, you're very literary. Um, just, I mean, you and I hang out, we talk, um, speak sometimes. Um, but, you know, you, this was an inspiration, and you're very good at this. And, I mean, this is a really good read, you guys. Um, so, I mean, what was the what was the emphasis? I mean, what, what did you, like, go, like, oh, man, you're sitting out there gardening, or you're just making this killer, you know, a barrel of wine, and you're like, oh, man, I should write a book. Wow. I mean, you know, it, I, I love the fact that we're talking about this now. I, I when I, I worked at a family winery as a child, worked uh, uh, disgorging champagne, sweeping warehouses out, all the things you do as a 13 or 14 year old kid when you're in the family business. But when I went off to college, I said to myself and to my father, I'm never gonna get involved in the family business. I wanna go do other things. Mm -hmm. I was a sixth generation of the family. The family had been in Santa Clara County and making wine for 100 plus years. And I wanted to go off and do other things. When I went to school on the East Coast, I, I, I had the great pleasure of working with a couple of great professors who were American literature professors. And um, I'd always written, had been a voracious reader from my earliest days, thought that I wanted to teach literature and write books when I was in graduate school, which I, which I did end up going to graduate school at NYU. And... Good school, you guys, if you don't know that. It's just an amazing place. And um, scribbled for years and years and years. And what started out as a 15,000-word kind of just a mishmash of stuff became an 80,000-word um, document about my love affair and my love letter to winemaking, to cellars, to vineyards, to what it's like to be in a room where fermentation is going on, yeah. what it's like to blend wine. What it's like to, to dive deeply into that personal and emotional thing that is wine. And COVID gave us an opportunity, gave me a, an opportunity to find some time to do this. Gave so me an opportunity to make a killer show, too. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Proud to be on it. Um, right, so. Where I'd write a thousand words a night. And over the course of a year, I, I had a manuscript, I, I found a publisher. Uh, and he loved what I was doing, and we found a great design team to, to, to put everything together. I think it's a beautiful book, and yeah. I think that it, it's it's profoundly intimate. I think it's a really cool read if you like wine, if you like f things to do about you know family and the idea of w what it means to be personally connected to where you are mm -hmm. environmentally in the vineyards, yeah. in the cellar. I, I, I encourage awesome everyone to... It's fun. Yeah. I love... I and love it goes well with this wine. So the book is called Lineage. The wine is called Lineage. You get that uh, correlation there? There's that connection. Yeah. Well, tonight, I'll tell you, before we went on uh, to film this, we were tasting First Growth Bordeaux, um, yes. and uh, his wine came in number two um, of this whole thing. Uh, it was, like, pretty amazing. Very um, exciting. And believe me, these other people had no idea what was going on there. They had no idea which what producer it was. Um, I did not rank him number two. I ranked him number four. Um, but that's, I'll take that. that's okay. That's Given the okay. crowd, I will take because that. Because I knew some of the other producers and, and those kinds of things. So, But the fact is, this is matching up very well with Bordeaux. You have fallen in love with, with Cabernet Sauvignon. You've fallen in love with Merlot. Definitely with Cabernet Franc. Let's not forget this one. But, you know, it's something that you've really put a lot of passion into. This area has a lot of history of Cabernet Sauvignon. Tell us a little bit about your, how you fell in love with it and the history of this area in a two minute. Segment. Yeah, so Liv the Livermore Valley is is really one of the, probably the, the, the hub of the wheel as far as viticulture goes in California. 70% of the California Cabernet grown right now is from the Concanon Brogue. Yep. 80% of the which Chardonnay. Which is just across the street from us here. The and the Wenty Chardonnay one, it's about a couple miles that way if you've yeah. been that. 80% yeah. of the Chardonnay grown in California is Wenty grown. The Sauvignon Blanc business in New Zealand, thanks to the, to the Livermore clone of Sauvignon Blanc. This is a world-class growing area. And it, it, it's taken a couple of producers, frankly, to, to highlight the fact that this can be a world-class growing area if you farm properly, if you have the right vision in the cellar, and, you, and, and you're imaginative enough and, and, and you feel passionate enough about what you're trying to do to make some world-class wines. Uh, Cabernet Franc, my first love, it's my, it's my favorite grape, it's the sexiest grape alive, it really is, it, it, and it 
in Lotro coat, it's 100%. In Lineage, it differs from 5 to 30% depending upon the vintage. We're trying to make the most beautiful wine in the world. Yeah. Wines that, uh, that, that inspire, wines to which we hope that other winemakers aspire here in the area. We want people to fall in love with these wines, to dive deeply into mm -hmm. them, to say, oh my God, this is freaking delicious. Livermore Valley, holy sh mm. holy yes. Who knew yeah. that this could be done here? We are trying to change perspectives about you know which regions are capable of doing which things. And tonight's tasting with the Bordeaux, uh, first growths from the right bank and left bank was really cool because I, it puts lineage sort of center stage in this idea that world-class wines come from a bunch mm -hmm. of different places. Price points aren't really important when you're dealing with wines from $175 like Lineage mm -hmm. to a, a thousand bucks with Harlan. Mm -hmm. That being part of that crowd is what we aspire to. We believe our competitive set is first growth Bordeaux. We believe we can do it from Livermore. We want to be one of those, the only really winery here that believes in this region that deeply mm -hmm. and aspires to make those kinds of wines. And, and we, we do it because we're wine lovers, yeah. A, and we're, we're wine makers who happen to wine yeah. love wine, B. Well, you that's know? passion in a, in a nutshell right there, you guys. I mean, aspiring to make the world's greatest. And, and to be really honest, this area, you know, Livermore Valley, has been like this for a long time. Uh, there's a lot of history of American wine that started right here. Talking about the Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon. Really, the history is here. It's not Napa Valley or, or Sonoma County in, so, in some respects uh, because these clones that were started here and they really do such an I mean, they're all over the place. We all know it. So we, we definitely know what's going on here because we're drinking it and that's what's going on here. Now, that being said, um, there's only 300 cases of this stuff uh, made. So that's the amazing thing is you really capture what you want in here and it's like a destination you're making this a destination for people to come here how else could they get this uh, besides going to telluride with us you know you know and it's great um come back next yeah. year yeah so it's it's just an amazing thing but before we go into that we have to taste this next one because we'll make our points now cabernet based right here right okay yes. you guys get, get that memo cap. so in bordeaux there's the right bank and there's the left bank and we i kind of put it like this so um, pretend that this is this is the uh, the right bank over here and this is the left bank the the thing is that the ha, what is close to the left bank is actually the the Atlantic Ocean and that's the craziest thing is it's so close where the Cabernet is based and it's it's but the thing is that you can't get there because the wind is blocked by the largest sand dune in all of Europe and so it's close to the ocean and it, it actually does have some characteristics here too that remind me a lot of Livermore Valley and it's close proximity not to the ocean technically but the wind from the ocean that flows in through the delta here and that's what makes Livermore Valley so special and why they were starting to plant these grapes so long ago here and and made this the grape of California Cabernet Sauvignon and don't forget its lineage here but also with this great thing, can we get Nancy? Maybe could you bring over that uh, Merlot, Nancy? Cabernet. Oh, that's the Cabernet blend. Oh, okay. So we're gonna taste that one. Ooh, I like this. So we're gonna go into a different little thing. Nancy Castro, everyone, is in oh, the house. Nancy. What's in up, house. Nancy Castro? In the house. In the house. Welcome Welcome to the right. She's the. She she puts all of the beautiful stuff together. Yeah. Beautiful woman, beautiful stuff. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Indeed, I like it. I'd like I to like say it. I made this beautiful Cabernet. She says it she better. She made than the us, packaging. Yeah. yeah. And she made, uh, yeah, inspires constantly what we're, what we're doing. Thank you, Nancy. The I think the Nance, the Nance. Nance is in the house. You know, one, one of the things I think is important about what we're doing here in Livermore is that we get a chance to, to showcase world-class aspiration with actual world-class fruit and you don't have to be in Napa you don't have to be right. in 55,000 acres we have 2,500 acres here in Livermore but we've got some of the vineyards that that are um, the, the, the the vineyards that are planted in exactly the right place to take advantage of and this is what I think where you were headed that because of the east-west orientation of Livermore yeah. 
it's a it's a wind dominated Appalachian, yeah, right? Absolutely. So it's sunny during the day, but mm -hmm. the winds that are coming in from San Francisco Bay make this a very cool growing area at night. Right. And that diurnal temperature range gives us sunlight for photosynthesis and sugar and alcohol, but cold weather at night to maintain acidity so that we have really gorgeously balanced fruit. Yeah. Just so people know, they think Livermore is a really hot area. It's not. We're harvesting Cabernet two or three weeks after Napa Valley is already yeah. done. Yeah. And in the eastern foothills of the Gilmetti Vineyard, one of our primary sites, we're not pick, we're, we're done picking a couple of weeks before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And that's that's important for people to realize that this is this is not you you know this is not the Central Valley. Yep. This is the Central Coast. Yep. And this is a coastal Appalachian dominated yep. by cool temperatures at night yep. that give us the ability to uh, create gorgeous wines and we're in the process of finding other amazing vineyards yeah and that's the thing is you've got these little vineyard designates here the right. Bates Ranch and all these kinds of interesting ones the the ones with the Italian name you yes. gotta like that I mean I love it, it. that's I mean look at the tradition <laughs> of this how do you know it's a great uh, potential for growing grapes in a lot of these areas you grow plants and vegetables and you and you do other things first you plant trees you plant produce you plant fruit trees and it was always successful here and this became an area that became a dominant region in the wine history of California you know Livermore Valley to me is one of the great um, namesakes of the history of California wine there's no doubt um, and it became really one of the first Appalachians made in the United States sure. um, which is wonderful to think about uh, it, it was really granted a long time ago 1981 1982 were the first two real small segments where Napa Valley was um, Santa Cruz Mountains. That's right. You know, these kinds of areas, Sonoma Valley were those kinds of areas. And you're like, oh, wow, that's history right there. And Livermore Valley is one of them. And here we are tasting these great wines. Tell us a little bit about this uh, blend here. So the Premier, Premier, we have several different brands in our portfolio. Lotricote Cab Franc, which you showed earlier, is a Cab Franc brand. Lineage is a our single vineyard and, you know, it's a single variety. It's our Opus One, for lack of a better way of describing it. It's a Bordeaux blend. Lineage. Lineage. Uh, Premier, 100% Cabernet. But it, it is a Livermore Valley expression by intention. Mm -hmm. A Livermore Valley expression of what Cabernet ought to be from Livermore. We do a lot of single vineyard wines under Stephen Kent as well. This is the granddaddy of them all. This is this is my sense of what makes the best Cabernet that we can make from this area, mm -hmm. and I think is as good as anything from California, in terms of just a purity of fruit, structural um, cohesiveness, uh, just a, a, the, the idea that we're going to give you something that's beautiful, that's fruit-driven, that has a structure, mm -hmm. has balance, right. all the things that we want from great wine. I think it's great. You know, tonight uh, we also had a lot of the your your fans here. I mean, that was the great thing is that um, it wasn't just me and him and Nancy drinking these fabulous uh, single growth wines. He's got a lot of followers, and this is great because you know getting the chance to put this in a blind tasting and these kinds of wines, especially the lineage, which was really featured in that um, against the top dogs, you know, from France. This is in Bordeaux in particular. It was so interesting, you know, to get the perspective of how consumers are looking at this, especially ones that collect wines, right. and why it's it's right there in their their wheelhouse, and why they really are, have been enjoying this. Why they, they they really are dedicated followers of your brands. We make yeah. four thousand cases of wine a year, total. Most 4, of which 000. is direct to consumer. That's it. So it's tiny. I yeah. mean, you know, the the biggest wineries have just dropped that much wine down the drain by accident. We're tiny, but we're, I mean, I, I, the desire personally is to make the best wine in the world. Yeah. I don't know how many vintages I have ahead of me. I know I have today to concentrate on making something that's going to change lives right. to the degree that wine can. It definitely influence people because right. it did. I mean, I right. saw them. They were down there. Right. right. And and the our, our club members and people who have, have become followers of, of our wines, I think appreciate the fact that we're, we are authentically mm -hmm. about making great wine and yeah. celebrating what wine can do for people. And yeah. those, those are the kind of connections that we want to make.
that's pretty amazing. And I, what I love about it is you're really keeping ahead of the game too. You've got a new thing that you're putting on the, the labels too, um, which is really interesting. Um, some of the higher end wines are going to have this label. Um, Nancy, what is that called again? The, the silk screen? Yeah, the silk screen and the, the, the NFL. NFC. The oh, NFC. The NFC, NFC the not to be confused with National Football League. Uh, True. Uh, a, a conference. <laughs> not NFL, but NFC. Exactly. NFC. NFC. Lineage but, will have the NFC. Li lineage will have those on there. And you know what? I checked it out tonight. And it's a little sticker on there. And you put it on and you can just go whoop like that. And all of a sudden, look on your phone. You can learn a lot about the brand and the heritage of the family, the right. lineage. Mm -hmm. And about... None other than Livermore Valley. Which it's a way we of love. communicating yeah. with people, yeah. and giving information. I mean, when you find a bottle on a shelf, it's a very static thing. We want to try to give people an opportunity to learn what it is that drives us and what it is that makes that we think makes the region special and the wine special. Yeah. And um, this technology, which I think we're the first American winery to use, uh, working with a company called Procure from Australia, is. Um, and there's, yeah, there's the little chip. Oh, there it is. DVD there's mom. the chip. Yeah, and you put your phone on that. See that chip, you guys? Pretty awesome. Yeah, it's very cool. So we're the first American winery to use this to give people an opportunity to learn about our vineyard practices, our winemaking philosophy, mm -hmm. about the wines themselves. We want to be able to share. We do a lot of stuff on mm -hmm. social media. We do a lot of video. We talk a lot. We love to communicate. I, I wanted to be a professor. And so. But here he is. I, to the Aren't extent that I can educate people about lineage. Wine. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Amazon.com. Um, lineage. Um, <laughs> is an opportunity to give people just more information about wine. Wine, the first title of this book was going to be Bottomless because wine is a bottomless thing. You can never get to the end of your fascination with and your experience with a single bottle of wine. Every time you go back to it, it changes. And that's the thing that's if it's so good. exciting. If it's if good. If it's good. If it's good. And it's going to change True. for the better, too. Let's make that real True. clear. Bad wines don't change for the better. No. All wines can age. <laughs> Most wines shouldn't age. But um, yeah. when you when you deal with wines that are, are made with, with passion and authenticity, you're dealing with wines that you can go back to. Every time you smell it, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And and even more than that, it's, it's about... The desire to connect to people. I, I'm a storyteller I'm, uh, from a writing standpoint, but I'm a storyteller from a wine standpoint too. There's there really no difference between the two of them from the standpoint of wanting to connect with people. The yeah. vehicle is different. It's yeah. a piece of paper versus a glass of wine. Same idea. Connect with people emotionally so that they, they can get hopefully an unadulterated experience with a winemaker who believes in unadulterated. what he does. Unadulterated. Good word, you guys. Get that? Lineage. lineage. Once again, Cheers. lineage. This has been fun. You know, it's too fun to talk to you. We could have um, a blast, but the most important thing is we're setting the tone with these amazing wines. And we're also talking about Livermore Valley and why it's a great destination and why I respect it so much. You know, to be really honest, how we really met a long time ago was I got to do an amazing thing right. for the. Um, Livermore Valley um, Winery Association and we did a, a presentation in the city and he was I was the moderator and he was on the panel and we had such a great time Carl Wente got to give a shout out to Carl Wente and some of the other great producers he was the important <laughs> person in the valley absolutely but you know that's the thing too it's the next generation you're you know your family's making the wines too I mean my I son got, is my I got to take him to yeah. Telluride him and Nancy went to Telluride we did seminars it's it's freaking harvest, you guys. It's harvest, and we're there because the family's making the wines while he's gone, right. and that's okay. There's trust. It's called right. trust, and it's gonna work out. It's called growth. They got to have fun with exactly. me, and it was Indeed. awesome. Indeed, so yeah. much fun. Yeah. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Cheers, my friend. Absolutely. Thank you Amazing. for tuning in to the Varietal Show. We look forward to you guys coming back soon, and uh, we got more good stuff coming up. But don't forget, Livermore Valley rocks. Um, Stephen Kent um, Mirasu rocks. Uh, Lineage rocks. The the book is amazing. Everything's good. You know. Thank it's you, my good. friend. That's cheers. awesome. All right. Cheers. Cheers.